Welcome! This video contains an introduction, an interview so you can gain deeper understanding of the subject from spirit level, and a group frequency calibration so you can start to clear the frequency distortion patterns around this topic. Enjoy! Hi everyone, my name is Karen Chong and I'm here with my co-host Dennis Kelly. Today we're discussing the topic of will, or what I'll call will from the mind, versus surrendered will, or what I'll call divine will. So in our culture, will from the mind is extremely celebrated. It's what we believe will bring us success. It's correlated with inner strength and determination and getting what we want. The challenge with it is that it's about control and it's about getting an outcome that we think we want based on very limited input. So science has shown that there are many millions of data points happening at any given moment in time, but our minds can only focus on a very, very tiny fraction of those data points in order for it to not become overwhelmed or paralyzed and that so we can continue forward and go into action. And typically the mind focuses on the patterns or the data points that it's most habituated to. So while it's effective, it's limited. Today we're going to be discussing surrendered will and how that opens up so many more possibilities, even greater than you can possibly imagine, because it's not limited by the input that the mind can take in. So let's dive right in. Dennis? Well, Karen, it's so good to join you again. I, I, I'll tell you what, I'm so excited about this topic and all these different sessions that we're doing. And I am so appreciative because I'm learning so much. And this one that you presented just now about the will mm -hmm. is, I have to be honest, it, it gets a little foggy mm -hmm. for me. So I'm curious what your insight is. Mm -hmm. So you talked about the will of the mind. Mm -hmm. And then you talked about the will of the spirit. Yeah, or surrendered will. Yeah, Surrendered will. So let's start with the will of the mind. Mm -hmm. You know, as... As a young man, I was taught, you know, to be successful, you got to take control. Yeah. You got to make something happen. Yeah. You got to be focused. You yeah. got you got to set goals. Mm -hmm. You've got to be, you know, regimented. You got to be disciplined. Mm -hmm. And now I'm hearing something different coming from you. Mm -hmm. So I'm not suggesting that uh, we don't be disciplined. What I'm suggesting is that there is something greater than just our will that can bring us results that are even greater than what we can imagine if we surrender our will to pure source, essentially. So the mind is awesome as a tool. It's awesome. And the will from the mind is an incredible force. And it has and does bring a great amount of success on the material plane. For sure, it can. It can also um, get really kind of distorted and a little bit misguided because we think we want what we want. Right? I don't know, what these preferences actually come from our distortion patterns. We think they come from um, ourselves, but they actually come from our distortion patterns. So the question is, for your greatest good, are those things actually what you really want? I mean, given the small amount of information we have, and given that these distortion patterns are creating our thoughts and our desires and our emotions. So if we surrender our will to pure source, then what happens is that all this magic can come in because we're not the ones who are limited by our own distortions and feelings and all this stuff. It's something greater that's coming in to help us. Does that make sense? I think. Okay, go for it. <laughs> so um, I've heard, you know, I heard a lot there. Yeah. So one of the questions I've got is you talk about surrender. Yes. So you're saying that I've got this mind mm -hmm. and this mind has thoughts. Mm -hmm. And these thoughts in many cases are just being repeated in old patterns. Yes. That are kind of just a reflection of those distortions distortions that we talked about the other day. Yes, that's right. So where you step in is you can help me with these distortions which allow me to almost free up yes. my new and creative thoughts Yes. that are somewhat connected to spirit. Mm -hmm. You talked about pure source. Yep. 
So I'm surrendering to what I think is my will mm -hmm. to a higher source. Yes. Is that, is that where we're at? Yes, that is okay. exactly where we're at. So I'm going to answer that question in a number of ways. Okay. So the first is, in terms of... You also actually said a number of different things in that. <laughs> Touche. Well, it's my turn. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> so, okay. So what I'll say about all of that is, the first thing is, yes, so your thoughts are dictated by the distortion patterns that are running you. And you may even find yourself saying something that your parents said, like your mother said, and you believe it to be true. And you, you wonder, and if you really think about it, you think to yourself, do I really believe that? Or is it just something my parents said to me over and over again? Or that my teachers told me, or that whoever told me. I mean, that's just an example of that. And you'll catch yourself saying these things. You're like, oh my God, I can't believe I just said that, or whatnot. But the distortions are the same in that they create these thoughts. And once we remove the distortion patterns, it opens up a new realm of thought possibility to us because we're not constrained by them anymore. Okay, so that shifts. What I'm talking about in addition to that is once the frequency work is done, once it's complete, to help propel it forward, the surrendered will allows for more magic and more possibility to come in because we're letting go of what we think we want, okay, which is informed by the distortion patterns, right? and by a very small amount of information that we can perceive with our very small minds. I don't care how smart you are. There's, our minds can only take in so much information. Right? I'm not suggesting that it has to do with intelligence. It's our brains can only take in so much information. So what happens is that when you tap into and surrender to pure source, that consciousness is aware of everything at all points in time. So chances are, it's a little more informed. <laughs> and once we surrender to that, and we're connected to that, then all this magic can come in and what can come in for our greatest and highest good expands. Wow. Because it's informed by a source of information yeah. that is the all that is. So that's, that's the word that I think I was looking for, is expansion. Mm -hmm. So right now, you know, it, there's times when I feel that I live in a very small world. Yeah. And this world is just created by these patterns mm -hmm. that I've had throughout my lifetime. Mm -hmm. And we talked the other day about where those thoughts and patterns come from. Mm -hmm. And so what's extremely exciting for me is to hear you talk about expansion. Yeah. So what you're saying is humans, we have the possibility mm -hmm. to expand beyond those limited thoughts. Absolutely. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Yes. And so where do you come into play with this? So I come to you, uh -huh. and I've got this little world that I live in, uh -huh. and I've got my beliefs and my, you know, my thoughts and my desires and all this. Uh -huh. And I come to you, and I tell you, boy, you know, I, I've heard what you've had to say. And I would like to step into this world of expansion, mm -hmm. to truly step into my true potential. Yeah. Where, where do you come in? Well, where I can come in is to accelerate and expand even more. So you're in this box. Let's take your analogy of the box. Yep. Yeah. So I break the box. So I help you break the box. So it's not me doing it to you. It's not like I take a hammer to it and I bludgeon it. With the two of us together, what happens is we remove the box. So the box is a construct created by distortion patterns. Okay, that's it. And so if you remove or delete the distortion patterns, the box actually can dissolve or, if that's too scary, it can get bigger, right? Okay. So instead of being this size, it's now this size I got you. because you're not as limited to this. And maybe it's no longer a box. Maybe it's, I don't know, like a circle. Let's yeah. just imagine. It just yeah. gets bigger and it changes. And so the nature now of this bigger circle compared to the small cube, let's just imagine, yeah. is that, wow, this is a lot more possibility here. Yeah. There are a lot more different thoughts. You can open to different emotions, experiences, patterns, like people coming in and all that sort of stuff. So your reality starts to expand. And if you can exercise surrendered will, which is basically you know, surrendering your will to pure source, then what happens is that sphere, that sphere will actually start to grow in and of itself because you're not trying to lock in the sphere. You're just like, okay, well, 
perhaps the sphere can grow. And you're right, the sphere can grow because you're not trying to control the sphere. The sphere is just being allowed to be and there, therefore it could expand. We have a lot more power than we think. It becomes very natural, very organic. Yes. And, you know, it's kind of ironic that we challenge people to think outside the box. Yes. <laughs> we but, do. <laughs> but what we find is that as we step outside the box, it yeah. gets a little scary. True. And that's the unknown. Yes, absolutely. So I can hear you, mm -hmm. and I understand what you're saying. Yep. But, oh boy, what's outside my little box? Yes. And the lovely thing about surrender... Okay, so I'm going to make a distinction. Okay. So when we think of surrender in our culture, surrender is from weakness. So we yeah. think, yeah. oh my God, I'm like up against the wall. I have to surrender because I have no choice, right? I'm like in a weakened position. My back is against the wall. I have like, you know, a knife in my throat or whatever. So I'm in a position of weakness and I have to surrender. There is surrender from strength. And we don't talk about surrender from strength in our culture very much at all. Surrender from strength, from the spirit perspective, is to be so complete in and of yourself on a spirit level that you know with absolute certainty that you can transcend whatever emerges. You can. And there's no fear because you're like, okay, well, whatever happens, it's happening. And I'm either going to learn something from it, transcend it, be with it. Something's going to happen, but whatever it is, there's potential there and I can use it to grow even more. So that is a position of surrender from strength. Does yeah. that make sense? It's not from like being disempowered. It's you actually it. empowered. And that, that fear sometimes can be so powerful. Yes. It's life threatening. Absolutely. Yes, I've and seen it. It yeah. might be because at some point in my past, mm -hmm. whatever that might have been, mm -hmm. it was life threatening. Absolutely. Yep. And so that that energy, that drama, that, you know, whatever that surrounds that mm -hmm. is triggered mm -hmm. if I try to step out. Yes. And so, but what you're saying is, is if I have the courage yep. and if I have the strength to what we talked about the other day is to look at it, mm -hmm. to be accountable mm -hmm. and to move through it, mm -hmm. the potential is infinite. Is outside that box is unbelievable. Yeah. yeah, and what I also would like to note is that that fear is a distortion pattern. So if you we work together, I can help remove that yeah. because a lot of times that fear of the unknown, which by the way is very human and natural, is often ex imposed from an external source. It's like a thought control form to keep us small and within the box. It comes from our lineage sometimes because we've had, you know, our ancestry has been afraid of the unknown or they, and if they go outside, then it's scary. So they carry that with them. Or if it's an external source like um, religion or cultural to keep us small. If we're afraid of going beyond what we are told that is known, we never explore. So it's very convenient and very easy to control us if we believe that only what we know is safe. So if we remove that thought form, the distortion from that thought form, there's liberation. And so part of what I can do is help you remove those distortion or work with you to remove those distortion patterns that are coming from lineage or external sources to lessen that fear. So you don't have this immediate or jerk response yeah. to that. So it's not as scary. And you mentioned courage. It does take courage, but it takes less than you would imagine that it does once you've had the frequency distortion removed because it's just this natural consequence of that falling away. And then the calling of the soul gets stronger, or the higher, whatever you want to call it, the spirit or whatnot, right? yeah. gets stronger and then you just feel compelled to follow. And I'm sure as you go through that process, a mm -hmm. sense of confidence Yes. It starts to come with it. Yeah. Because it's almost like moving into that state of being fearless. Yes. Yes. Because and exactly. And I would say also that even if you are scared, you're just like, I'm doing this anyway. Because I mean, it's not like we're fearless. I mean, yeah. we're human, right? Yeah. So sometimes if we're doing things, we're like, oh my, I don't really, geez. <laughs> this seems like I'm really 
that is a good idea or I'm scared when I'm doing this. Yeah. And part of the, the yeah. beauty of that is the transcending of it because it's not about not feeling fear. We're human. Of yeah. course we're going to feel fear. It's like how do we keep going despite of it? And in, in that magic of that act of power of being like, I'm still, I feel called, I am terrified and I'm doing this anyway, that in itself is a tremendous act of power. You know, I think that's one of the beautiful gifts that you have to offer to us is the fact that you've been on this journey mm -hmm. and you've had those experiences mm -hmm. and you've had that expansion and still here you are. You know, you're living in this world. Mm -hmm. You're doing the laundry. <laughs> you know. In fact, it's on right now. <laughs> <laughs> and so you, you have to function in this world. Yeah. So it's not like we're leaving this world. No and our responsibilities as a human. Yeah. You know, so we can be in and of this world. Absolutely. But have the ability and freedom to be connected to yeah. pure source. Absolutely. It's important to be in this world. Like we wanted to be here. It's not about sequestering yourself into some like like remote ashram on a mountain and meditating. I mean, that's fine. You can do that. That's awesome. And when you're in this world, facing the challenges, confronted with life, being in life and being in intimate relationship with different people and all like that's the like the 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 push that friction yeah. is like what we can actually grow most yeah. from, you yeah. know, as opposed to just being away from it all the time. And I'm not saying that retreat is not a good, bad no, is a bad thing. No. Of course it's required. Yeah. But yes, being in life, you know, it's funny. I've seen some people who do frequency work almost addictively and they don't want to be in life. They just want to like do the frequency work right. and they, and that's all they want to do. And I'm like, there's a very limited amount of upward movement if you just do that because it's the being in life, that friction of experiencing that. How do you react to those things? How are you triggered by them? Not triggered by them? How do you choose to respond, express anything that that's from life? That's where learning comes from. So it's important, as you say, to be in the world, to experience life, because we asked for it, because this is where the growth is. It's not just about sitting and doing frequency meditations all the time. I mean, that's helpful, but the, you need the two together to have the expansion yeah. and the growth. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, you know, I, what I sensed as you talked about that is what you're doing is taking the everyday world yeah. that we live in but wrapping it in this sense of excitement and yeah. joy and abundance and happiness. Yeah. And so going to the grocery store, meeting with your friends, having dinner with the, you know, yeah. is extremely exciting yeah. because you're connected and you're part of, you know, yeah. something much bigger than you used to be. Yeah. Bigger than the box. And of course, there are times when you're like, oh, I really don't want to go meet this person. Yeah. And then you go meet the person and either... A, a, a number of things can happen, right? Either it can be like what you thought it was, and you're like, oh, and you can learn from that. Yeah. It can be like, wow, that was actually really fun, and you can learn from yeah. that. You, can, you know, there's any multitude of possibilities, and all of them are kind of amazing. <laughs> if you're not attached yeah. to what the outcome is, right? So it's obviously very human to have that like resistance to something but then when you're not attached to what it will be then it's just like oh well then it could be anything that could be equally as exciting so not only not attached but not in control exactly and you know that's a tough one ooh, believe me ooh. i'm of chinese descent control is like a big thing <laughs> Middle name, huh? right <laughs> so let's let's circle let's circle all the way back okay and <laughs> Surrender. Yeah. It sounds like that's part of the key to this is surrender. Do you, yeah. <laughs> it's so tough for people who love control. Do you, do you have any <laughs> tips or hints or just from your experience or working with people that just to help us with that yeah. surrender? Sure. So my biggest breakthrough with regards to surrender. So by the way, it's hard for people who like control, who have a lot of fear. Surrender is the hardest thing that we can do. It takes the most courage to surrender. It was for me. So I'll just speak for myself. Yeah, yeah that was a tough one. Anyway. <laughs> um, right. But, um, and so the lessons kept coming, like surrender, surrender, surrender. And the lessons kept getting louder until I finally did. Um, the biggest breakthrough for me was I realized, oh, wait a minute. This doesn't have to be hard. 
it's all I have to do is think of it as following. I can follow. I'm just following. So something comes in and I'm like, oh, okay, well, there seems to be energy here. So I'll follow that. I'm just following. I'm not trying to exert my will. I'm just following, which to me was an easier way to get yeah. to surrender than like full on surrender. Like some people can, I suppose, if they don't have that much fear, but I, I did. Yeah. And so um, for me, I was like, oh, I'm just going to follow. And it becomes fun. It's like, you know, the breadcrumbs in Hansel and Gretel, where they just follow the breadcrumbs, right? I kind of feel like I follow energetic breadcrumbs. So I'm like, oh, I guess I'm supposed to meet this person because they've shown up randomly. I haven't thought of them for three years. And this person mentioned them. I happened to read about them and I got an email about them. Oh, hmm. It's happened all in the past like five days. I think I should probably either reach out to them or check them out or something. You see, that's yeah. following. Yeah. It's just following, noticing and following. That's it. And once you do that, that is actually a form of surrender because you're not trying to force the outcome. You're just following what's appearing before you. So that to me was easier than just being like, okay, I'm surrendered. I don't even know what that was. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, I just yeah. like, I can't do that. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> so I does that help? Oh, yeah. certainly. Yeah. And the word I heard, as you said, follow, I also heard allow. Yes. Allow. Allow. Allow things to be what they are. Yes. And yeah. I'll tell you what, life gets a lot more relaxing and fun and yes. exciting. You know, where before if I have to control it, I have to control the outcome. So yeah. I better control this moment right yeah. now. Yeah. And if I can allow and here yes. again, it's it's a it's a it's a process. Totally. And you know what's a good key to know when you're not allowing? The word should. Should uh, it should be this way? Uh, they should do this. Uh, we really should. Uh, I really should. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, word. Yeah. Yeah. So as soon as I hear the word "should" in my own inner in inner talk or whatever, yeah. I'd be like, "Oh, wait a minute, should? Where did I come from?" So that's an indication to me that I'm not allowing that I'm trying to control. So it it sounds like to me that if if I'm working with you mm -hmm. and you're helping to relieve these distortions that we talked about the mm -hmm. other day. And so I'm starting to experience this expansion mm -hmm. and it's kind of exciting. It's a little scary, mm -hmm. but this is where I'm going to have the opportunity to surrender yeah. or to follow or to allow or to allow. Or let's use another word. Okay. If, if surrender is hard for some people, because it is. Yeah. Surrender is this bloody scary word. It just is. So as you say, you can use allow, follow, or soften. Just soften to what is. Just soften to what is. So that oh. implies an allowing, right? It's like, this is what's happening. Can I be soft around it? Now, I know for, for men that can be challenging because they're like, you're supposed to be in our culture, like <laughs> controlling and <laughs> whatevering the outcome, right? And it's hard for some women because we're very taught to be in our masculine. But instead of surrender, use the word soften. Can I just soften and be with this? Can I just soften and be? And that is a form of allowing. So that might be easier. So it's all just yeah. different. It's like whatever yeah. works. Right? Whatever works. Wonderful. And as you said that, what I picked up was, you know, really what we talked about the other day is resistance. Mm -hmm. It's surprising how much resistance we have in our lives. Yes. You know, because all these things are just kind of knocking on the door, wanting to be part of our life. Mm -hmm. And we just, yeah. you know, yeah. and so if we just, you know. Yeah. And you don't even have to allow it in. You can just allow it and look at it. Just be aware. Of it. Just to be aware of it. Yeah. You don't even have to, yeah. like people are like, oh my gosh, it might like overwhelm me and I might not want what I allow in. I'm like, well, you don't have to receive it. You can yeah. just see it. That's a possibility. And so that is... Um, um, even being able to see different possibilities is tremendously liberating. Very good. That, that was fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you. Karen, could you help me? I hear so often when I look at uh, your video or your website, GFC. Exactly what is that? A GFC is a group frequency calibration, which looks a lot like a guided meditation on a particular topic. And what I'm doing is I'm helping you to remove the distortion patterns of that particular topic. And because you're coming together as a mastermind in a group to connect to pure source 
even more and to clear the distortion patterns of this particular topic, what happens is a tremendous amount of momentum starts to happen because of the energetic of the entire group. And each individual is able to move faster and ascend higher than they could have on their own. Welcome everyone to the Group Frequency Calibration or GFC on Surrendered Will. So let's take three breaths together into your heart space, please. So taking an inhale, holding it for at least two to three seconds before you exhale. On your second breath, taking another deep breath in and holding your inhaled breath for at least two seconds longer than you did your previous breath. Becoming aware of how your body is positioned as you exhale. And after you exhale all the air out of your lungs, please hold your voided breath for at least two to three seconds. Becoming more comfortable with emptiness. Taking another deep breath in for your third breath on your own time. And then you're going to do the same thing on this breath. You're going to hold the inhaled breath for at least a second or two longer than you did your previous breath. And then you're going to exhale and hold your voided breath out for at least two seconds longer than you did your previous breath. At your own time, no rush. And just note that for those of you who are new, that I am working on you even as I'm speaking. And what is happening at this current moment is the mastermind is starting to gel. And the mastermind is when two or more individuals come together with a common intention. And in this case, this intention is the highest possible intention of connecting even more to pure source. So therefore, it is only the highest versions of our highest selves coming together, which gives us massive momentum. And when you're complete with your three breaths, please breathe into your solar plexus, which is between your belly button and where your sternum ends or where your ribs meet in front of your body, okay? Please note that I will be making sounds at my end, such as snapping, exhaling sharply, humming occasionally, uh, yawning. Um, that is not because I'm tired, it's just because this is how I move or remove the frequency distortion patterns at this current point in time. It likely will change, but that is how it works at this moment. Taking another deep breath into your solar plexus. For some of you on this call, it will be helpful for you to put your hand over your solar plexus. The first distortion pattern that we are going to be removing is that of fear, of surrender specifically. For 80% of you, this scares the living daylights out of you, right? So it's not just a casual fear. This is extreme fear. And it may look like extreme control okay, in your life. You think you like to control everything. People, situations, time. Even if you think that you're okay with all of it, Notice that it, it doesn't, you like to control those things, or if not, you feel anxious. 
So that's the first distortion pattern that we're going to remove. And just note that I'm working on you in groups, subgroups, and as individuals. And if I say something that resonates with you, then it's likely yours. And if you, if I say something and you really resist it, and you think, oh, that can't possibly be me, or that sure as heck isn't me, it's likely yours. So I invite you to be open to that possibility. And why don't we do this as you breathe into your solar plexus. Please ask yourselves the following question to yourself in your own mind. And that question is, how can I connect only to pure source even more? My question again is, how can I connect only to pure source even more? Or alternatively, you can ask the following question. How can I become even more aware of my connection to pure source? How can I become even more aware of my connection to pure source? Because of course we're already connected to pure source, it's about our awareness. And as you ask yourself that question, or one of those questions, and connect even more to pure source, Imagine, see, sense, feel, or become aware of a brilliance that is starting to grow in your solar plexus. And on my end, I'm enhancing your bandwidth as this brilliance that you're imagining in your solar plexus starts to grow and expand and become even more brilliant as you connect even more only to pure source How bright can you allow yourself to become? yourself to rest in this brilliance, which as a note is you. So please breathe into your heart space.
So this is a distortion pattern of trust. Okay. It's actually a bundled distortion pattern of trust. So it's a lack of trust in self and lack in trust in pure source and lack of trust in your higher self. Okay, so you're not quite sure any of those things have you, including yourself. So let's release this distortion pattern because it's very difficult to have surrendered will if you don't trust any of those things. So taking a deep breath into your heart. And actually, if you could breathe between your belly button and your heart, that would actually be better. So just imagine breathing between these two points. If you need to imagine a tube, that is totally wonderful. Now, please imagine, see, sense, feel, or become very aware of the end of your sternum or the base of your sternum. Your sternum is again where your ribs meet, that bone where your ribs meet in front of you. So you're going to find where your sternum ends, that fleshy bit. If you press it, it hurts a little bit. So right there, you're going to breathe into that point or just become aware of that point or feel that point. So this is the resistance of letting go. That's the distortion pattern. The resistance to letting go. So let's remove this. And I mean this on all levels. Letting go of basically anything. So for um, a subgroup of you, you can barely let go of... Um, it'll show up as like you have a hard time letting go of money. So you're very, 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 very conscious of money. Even if you have a lot of it, it's difficult for you to spend spend it. Um, it could be letting go of uh, letting go of your sense of time, letting go of what you think is right, letting go of your conclusions, assumptions, belief. Okay, that's another subgroup of you. So letting go really runs the spectrum. And uh, in this case, it's... Uh, Letting go of all of it. Okay, so begin. Now, for some of you, you won't be able to, but it's letting go of everything conclusions, assumptions, beliefs, control, all of it. Okay, because you're trying to hold all of these things fixed and rigid so you feel safe. You're not more safe because you're holding that rigid. It's just an illusion. So, Removing this very strong distortion pattern. Mm-hmm. 
you. Good. Okay, so please breathe from your pelvic floor or your perineum all the way up through to your throat. Okay, so we're curves up into your chin, the entire area, please. And if you want to imagine a tube connecting these points, please do that. So this is a distortion pattern of fear. For some of you, it's microscopic view, it's resistance, it's not as strong as fear, but it's, most of you, it's fear. Of being in flow. And specifically, of being in flow by having released the mind. Okay, so obviously if you're in flow, you've released the mind. But for some of you, you st struggle with that. So we're moving this distortion pattern so that you can start to get a sense of what that means. And that actually, Things get easier when you're in flow. Because it implies that you have total faith. in what is in your connection to pure source and that your higher self has you. Let's remove this distortion pattern as you breathe from your perineum or your pelvic floor all the way to the curve of your chin. Please now breathe into your solar plexus, which is between your belly button and the end of your sternum. So this is this distortion pattern of um, judgment. Okay, so you, there's a subgroup of you that judges yourself for not being able to surrender. You yearn to surrender and you judge yourself because you, you find it difficult to. And a lot of you have um, a very overactive mind okay, and you judge your overactive mind. So depending on which subgroup you're in, it's one of these two things. So you judge your overactive mind, which makes your overactive mind more active. So it's very difficult 
to surrender when your mind is screeching at you, and then you're judging yourself for having a mind that's yelling at you, okay? Especially if you perceive yourself as being awakened, right? Because you have a, a, um, an attachment to that significance. Please know there's no judgment around this. I'm just saying what I'm seeing. So it's okay that you have that, but just notice that you have it. And ask yourself what you're getting from it without judging yourself. Just what am I receiving from this? It's interesting I have that. So a variety of distortion patterns here as you breathe into your solar plexus. And for all of you, in addition to all of this, your pain bodies are getting very active because a lot is changing on spirit level for you. So I'll also work on your pain bodies as I release these distortion patterns, which are quite strong actually. So all you have to do is breathe into your solar plexus. Good, so as we end, let's do one final thing. Please imagine, see, sense, or feel your heart. <clears throat> and as you breathe into your heart space, imagine your heart becoming brilliant. So it starts to glow. Mm -hmm. it may start as a tiny flame from the very center of your heart and then it becomes more and more brilliant brighter <sighs> and even brighter still so your whole heart starts to glow with the radiance and the ferocity of the sun. And it starts to glow so brightly that it fills your entire body with its brilliance. And for some of you, that brilliance will expand into your spirit body, which is a sphere arm's length around you. As it gets brighter and then see how bright your heart can become and for some of you that will mean you expand all the way into the stars and to the edges of the multiverses from deep within the center of your heart. Please note this brilliance is you. It's a good place to leave you. So I'm going to leave you as long as you'd like, resting in the brilliance that is you. And for some of you, if you feel called to it, there is a GFC on trust, if you'd like to deepen this for yourself. You can find that on the website at spherocalluminosity.com. Only 
if you feel called, of course. And I look forward to meeting you on the next GFC.